welcome. I'm Jennifer Sagar, and today I have a really a good friend and a guest who is a local homeopath, Dr. Roland Gunther. I am really pleased to have you here today, and I'd like you to tell us a little bit about, first of all, a little bit about you. You're from Germany. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Jennifer. I'm very pleased to be here with you and to share this conversation with you. Yeah. yeah. And how long have you lived in Canada? It's 11 years now. Wow. And wow. I think it's just one year that I became a Canadian citizen. Oh, yeah. right, so right. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Good. And, um, and you, you work here on the island now. I live on, on the island. island. I work here on the island. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. And you have a homeopathic practice. Yes, right. I do. Yeah. And um, so for some people, this is partly why I was wanting to do this type of, of show, because I'd like to introduce some of these, uh, uh, maybe perhaps what we consider non-traditional um, treatments or therapies yeah. to people who may not know so much about them. So would you be able to tell us a little bit about what is homeopathy? What is homeopathy? What a great <laughs> question. Homeopathy is a complete system of medicine that uses medicines that are processed, that are made from mineral, plant, or animal origin, mm. and uses them to stimulate the self-healing of the body. These remedies are highly diluted and highly energized. That means they are diluted until there's no substance, but only pure energy. Ah. It's a pure energetic treatment. And another quality is that we, it, does, it is not a fight, so it is not a struggle like when there's a fever uh, in conventional medicine, you give something to sink the fever. As homeopath, we would give something that could, in its raw form, uh, create the fever and now helps to sink the fever. Mm. I give you an example. Somebody that comes with a bee sting and a big allergic reaction to this bee sting mm -hmm. and it's all red and swollen and itchy and painful. Yeah. Very likely when he goes to a homeopath, a homeopath would give him a remedy called apis, which is a remedy made of bee poison. Wow. But it does not hold the original poison anymore, right. but it holds the whole energy of the bee and the bee poison, mm. which is then energetically raised into a high vibration. And this helps then the body to deal with this bee poison on the physical level. Uh -huh. Wow. So, so even though it's 200 years old, <laughs> back then, no uh, homeopathy, yeah? back then nobody talked about energy medicine. Right, yeah? right. It's it, pure energy it's medicine. It's pure energy medicine, right. Wow, that's, that's amazing. That, to me, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, so you are using things from the plant world, the mineral world, and uh, did I miss one? Sorry. And the animal. And, and, and the, the animal, animal kingdom, kingdom right. Also. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. To help the body come back into balance. Correct. Uh, yeah. Basically. So yeah. you treat the whole body, really. The, what you're looking at, the symptom, I suppose, is just where you perhaps are putting some of the attention, but it's a treatment of the whole body, if I'm, if I'm correct? Yes. You, you're looking at the body as a whole system. We look at the body as a whole system, and even more than the body. It's including our emotional and our mental sphere. Because mm -hmm. as an organism, as a living being, we are composed of different aspects, of different parts. We have our physicality, we have our physical body, but we also have our emotional and our mental or right. You could right. call it body. Mm -hmm. It's energetic bodies. Mm -hmm. And all together, uh, and of course our spirit, yeah, and all together, right. this is who we are as a human being. And the separation, physical, and here's this, uh, the soul, is very artificial. It is not real. In reality, soul and body constantly interact and influence each other. Right. And everybody right. knows that, meanwhile. Think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as a homeopath, not only we use that we consider the different problems somebody might have at the same time in the body, 
but we also include in our consideration the emotional background and how some, somebody thinks about life. Mm -hmm. And more than that, we include the family background. Wow. Because wow. a lot of our uh, things that we carry energetically, we did not create that in our individual life. We already got something passed on from our family, from mm -hmm. our ancestors, or from the culture that we're mm -hmm. born out of. Mm -hmm. Because also this family or our culture, our nation, has uh, an energetic uh, carry-on luggage yeah, <laughs> that's being passed right, on from right. generation to generation. <laughs> right, right. Because yes, what we cannot deal with, we will pass it on. Mm -hmm. So we carry things that are older even than ourselves, and we have to include wow. that. Yes. I think that, uh, as far as I understand recently, there's actually been some evidence, so sort of scientifically, in the DNA, uh, that, that, there, that they are finding that there's some of these things that we are carrying in our actual genes, which is partly perhaps what you're saying, or at least right. there seems to be some scientific proof now that this is, this is actually... Yeah. True. This is so yeah. true. Mm -hmm. In homeopathy, this is being considered and looked at for 200 years. We always included the homeopath, included the family history, because mm -hmm. they've seen that certain things are being passed down. Now, in modern science, we know about the epigenetics, and we know that experiences and problems are epi epigenetically passed oh, on. Right. And passed on from one generation to the other. Give you an example. Somebody comes, uh, yeah, being a German after war, uh, there, somebody, a woman might have been raped, yeah? Okay. Uh, the children, the, the daughters, carry that trauma in their wow. system and wow. it creates problems in the relationship mm in ways they relate to men. Mm -hmm. If I only look at this person right now from this, uh, from her life, I don't, and if I don't see the bigger picture, this is very, very hard to treat because it is not created out of this lifetime. Right. I need to include that historical, cultural, and family background mm -hmm. in order to make sense of some things. Right. Well, and works. only when I include that, mm -hmm. there can be a solution. Right. So, uh, when you are treating people, can you tell us how you would approach that? How, what, I guess, what, what's the, uh, how long do you even have to talk to people? And, and what's a little bit, could you just lead us through a little bit, sort of like a consultation? How would that look? Usually people come with a problem. Mm -hmm. So we talk extensively about the problem, the details of the problem, and also when it started. What happened before? Was there anything that might have caused it? Was there anything that might have triggered it or got the person out of balance before mm -hmm. that started? We have to include that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we have to see this problem that's being triggered there. Is it maybe an older problem? Is, is there a root also in childhood? Right. Yeah? And then we go mm. further from that. When mm. I see somebody the first time, mm -hmm. I take two to three hours time because wow. I really have to understand somebody. Wow. Somebody comes with a diagnosis and says, here, my little finger hurts. Right, yeah? right. Um, yeah. That's not enough for a homeopathic treatment. This diagnosis is like one stone of a mosaic in a big picture right, and right. it only mm. becomes its meaning through the bigger picture when I isolate it and only treat this finger and ignore the person that has this finger and has the whole the whole history and, and energetics that caused this problem right I don't do it justice and I only can treat it very superficially I can give a painkiller and maybe the pain goes away and something else gonna come up because the energetics that caused that would not have been influenced by any medication. Right, like right. Because there's so much more going on behind, as you say, behind in the systems that you yes. need to, to know about. So, And this is why we do energy medicine, because mm -hmm. we know that all symptoms, also in the physical body, mm -hmm. originally started from energetic disturbance. 
and this is where we have to to start the treatment. Right, right. And so, the, what do treatments look like? What uh, what do you give people? Are they even tablets or liquids or what? Uh, Gee, I should have brought some. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> they, are, they all look the same homeopathic. Oh, they they, okay. they come in usually. Yeah. They come in tiny little pellets like uh -huh. uh, sugar sacrose pellets, and so they all look the same. Yeah, and the the active ingredient is being sprayed on them and dried into these sugar pellets. Oh, okay. And then I give them like that. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And somebody takes three tiny little pellets and maybe once a day or maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. and that's all. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I guess um, very often people can, it only takes, uh, depending on what, what they're needing to, to treat, um, could take a month or two, or it's hard to say how long would a treatment last. It depends. Better answer you with a with a story. A few okay, days ago, I love your uh, a few days ago, <laughs> uh, a man in my treatment came and said, "How come I'm in your treatment now a year, mm -hmm. and my prostate problem is only a little bit better?" Yeah. Right. And you treated my wife, and after three months, her fibromyalgia was gone. Uh huh. Yeah? Right. So what's going on there? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, what a great question! Yes, I said, you know, your wife's problem was a, an individual creation of this lifetime. Uh -huh. She had that only for five years. Yeah. No so way. it was kind of easy to deal with. Mm. Your prostate problem is not only your individual problem. This is a problem of a culture. You have that in common with three quarters of all men here in our nation wow. at the same wow. time. And mm. you have it in the third generation of your family. So this is epigenetically hardwired. It right. will take way longer, it will take more effort, and it will go slower to heal. But it's also really important because whatever we do not take care of and whatever problems we are not able to deal with to heal and energies to integrate in our lifetime, we're going to pass it on if we want it or not. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. and because we love our children and want them to have a, a world without too much luggage and baggage from other lifetimes and people before that came before. Right. We try to deal with our problems and heal them. So even our own healing is not only our private individual thing, it's almost a responsibility for the whole, for, for wow. all our wow. relations, wow. like Native That's people That's such would a great say. way of thinking about it. And, and I think something that people often don't consider. We're pretty kind of centered in ourselves, especially when we're sick yeah. and we're kind of concerned with just healing that that's going on, but to look at it like that is, is pretty amazing. Um, you mentioned something that I know I've heard you talk about before, but when you talk about sort of a disease like prostate cancer or something that is also on a sort of a mass consciousness level happening in the world and, and how that, that really fascinates me how, they, how that affects or how when you're treating someone, how you're actually also treating that whole energy system, if I, if I understand correctly, uh, on, a, on a more mass level. Is that right? Or yes and know? no. We, I treat the person coming to see me. Right. But his or her healing has an effect on the collective. Wow, right. As right. well as the problems of our collective affect us mm -hmm. yes. individually very yes. strong. Yes. So the other way around, it goes the same. Every step that we do for our healing, we do it for everybody else around it. You know, indigenous people have a wonderful way of looking at that and a deep, deep wisdom. Like when... Uh, like native people go in the sweat lodge, they say all my relations, which is an acknowledgement. What I do, the healing that I'm doing, the prayers that I'm uh, mm -hmm. speaking in this ceremony, I do it for all my relations. It's mm -hmm. not just me. Right. Healing happens in relationship. Yes. So healing is mm -hmm. bridging the gap, bridging the separation and seeing again we are part of a relationship. We're wow. part of 
a big family. Mm -hmm. We truly are connected. Yeah. Uh, and that oh, has to be part of the healing. That has to be part of the healing. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And we support this process with homeopathic remedies. Mm -hmm. On an individual basis, yes. you know, each time that you're... On an individual right, basis. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. But I just think that's something that's so important to, to think about or to, to recognize how, how, yeah, when we do try to heal ourselves, we're, we're also doing it for, for um, everyone else. Because we are exactly. all interconnected. We are all yeah. interconnected. There's yeah. nothing that affects mm -hmm. only us personally. Yeah. Right. And what mm. we do also goes goes out to everybody else around mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So every step that we do in healing, we license others and make it easier for others to walk this path of healing. Right. Whoever right. today, whichever whoever man is dealing successfully with a prostate problem and makes it easier for everybody else. So this is a great, great opportunity to do something for ourselves and at the same time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for the collective, uh, for the whole, for all men and, and our whole nation. We often look at ourselves as so isolated, me against the rest of the world, yeah, yeah. in our survival fear-based yes. survival attitude. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not the truth. Yeah? It's me and the rest of the world. That's yeah? right. It's That's me right. including the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm just letting that sink in because I think that's just so, that's so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another aspect um, that uh, I'd like you just to touch on in, 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 within, I guess, the homeopathic um, work that you do is something called a shamia, which is, I believe, quite unique. Um, I've experienced it a little bit, but um, I, I, this is something that I think is really interesting and it's perhaps even a little bit uh, beyond the normal realm of the homeopathic treatments. It's something uh, you do use, I understand, your homeopathic training to to, to do this work, but maybe you could speak a little bit about that because I find it quite fascinating. I happily do because it's really, it's, this is my passion mm -hmm. and it is connected with homeopathy but not uh, absolutely only included in homeopathy. What Shamir is, is a ceremony of reconnection, reconnecting with nature. Mm. The parts of the ceremony come partially the mechanics come from homeopathy. The okay. mechanics are simply grinding up and diluting a tiny little bit of a, a substance like a plant. of a plant or mm -hmm. of a, uh, some hair of an animal or uh, some mineral. Grind it up and diluting it step by step. The energetics of what is happening Mm -hmm. are alchemical in nature because what's happening is a transformation. We can talk about that later. Okay. And the attitude I'm doing that with is really the attitude of indigenous peoples and that I was and am involved with in my native relatives mm -hmm. here. I walked the traditional native path and I lived here on the reserve. I'm um, adopted in a family on, on the reserve in Alberta and I walked the, this traditional path. Mm -hmm. This changed my whole attitude to the individual, to the community and to our relations, how we relate with each other and especially how we relate to nature. To nature. For me, a remedy is not something from a shelf in the pharmacy mm -hmm. that has a, a name and a number. For me, a remedy is a living being in nature that has a soul that is willing and able to communicate with us and happy to support us on our journey as oh, human beings. Wow. So mm. these, the, even the, the stone and the tree out there, they are part of our family and they support us. Mm. And when we, offer, when we accept their gift of healing that they provide, we give them our gratitude, our friendship, and our respect, and there's a, again a bigger cycle and a bigger right. healing. 
Now coming back to Shamia. Mm -hmm. So Shamia, I say, is where I'm home. Shamia is at the crossroads where alchemy, homeopathy, and shamanism it's, uh, meet. Ah, interesting. And okay. it is a ceremony where we uh, connect with nature, where we use something from nature. And in grinding it up, we set free the energy that was caught up in the physical okay. substance. We mm -hmm. take a tiny little, tiny little bit of that substance. Mm. This energy that we set free creates an energetic field vibrating in the room because we are within this vibrating space, we are affected. Every mm -hmm. cell of our body is affected and starts to resonate with this vib vibration. And then we simply have to go through a process of allowing, allowing something to happen and look inside and see how does that affect me. Uh -huh. okay. And it mm. usually affects first our physical body. Mm -hmm. We get certain sensations. Later on, when we change the dilution and the vibrational level, we are affected on our emotional levels and mm. it might be more or less painful. Memories or sensations come up, uh, sad, grief, mm. maybe a tear mm. or something like that, or an anger or whatever it is, yeah. And then we raise again the, uh, the vibrational level and we reach a mental level. And from this mental level, it's the first time that we can see the bigger picture of what I've been going through on the physical and on the emotional level so far and kind of understand, oh, this is a problem I'm dealing here uh -huh. with. And then we go even higher and reach a spiritual level. And there is something that's absolutely, for me, it's always a miracle. I've experience it so often and I'm <laughs> excited every time because uh -huh. what seemed to be a problem in the lower levels, when I reach the spiritual level, there's this alchemical transformation happening and suddenly it turns into a gift, into a gift wow. that I could not foresee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Let me give uh -huh. you an example. Can I give yeah, you an please. example? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For years I was uh, having dreams of lions chasing me and I was scared and trying to hide and run away and uh, so I knew I have some problem with that so I better take care of that somewhere uh -huh. and I did not know uh, what it is and whatever. Whatever. I asked around, uh, I prayed for it to get something, maybe a little hair or something from a lion in oh. order to do a shamia. Right, yeah? okay. And uh, for a long time, I did not succeed. Yeah, people promised me, and it didn't come. And I went to zoos, and they said no. Yeah, <laughs> and then within a couple of months, I got some hair from a line from a Maasai warrior in Kenya, wow. and uh, through somebody else, a friend that asked him in behalf of uh, me. And so this Maasai got his ceremonial headdress and cut off a little bit of hair. Oh, and said, wow. This is, what an honor. Uh, huh? This is a, a line that I killed as a young man. Yeah. And uh, a couple of weeks later, from a friend of mine, a homeopath in India, he sent me some hair of, an, of the last Asian lines. They have a reserve in India. And, Amazing. Uh, and, and I got there some hair. So I said, well, Earl, you better go for it now. It's time. Yeah. And I felt not ready. I had, oh, I'm not sure if right. I can handle that. <laughs> and my old not. And <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Anyways, so we did that. We gathered a small group of us gathered around that and then he uh, went into our inner space and like meditative space, grinding up this thing and it just watching what's happening. What was happening on the lower levels was just a, a huge increased ego and increased self-assertive, you know, aggressive behavior, a lust for certain violence and mm -hmm. uh, it, this was one part of the group and the mm -hmm. other part was like me we felt small and smaller and like victims and scared, yeah, uh -huh. and it was a real problem. 
And I was, uh, the whole first day for me was like that. And I prayed and said, oh, the Spirit help me. I don't know how to deal with that. And then the second day we reached the spiritual level and the thing turned around completely. And what seemed to be on the lower levels, just a bully, mm-hmm. yeah? Lions, when you look at them in nature, they are just big yeah, bullies, right, yeah? right, aggressive, yeah. and mm-hmm. whoever's in their way, they <laughs> just run over or kill him or whatever, yeah? All of a sudden, it was not about that anymore. It was about the roar of a lion is the beginning of creation. It's like what in the Bible was that the, the word of God, the first word, the first sound. Mm-hmm. The roar of the lion is really the statement, I am. And from oh, this wow. is the whole creation opens up in this space that this sound, the roar of the lion creates. And then in even higher levels than that, we uh, realize this is about leadership. And the line taught us on the higher levels what it means to be a leader, and to be king or to about, about leadership. Mm, true leadership. And the, mm. true leadership. That mm. it's not something that's been given to you from others, right. but something that you are gifted with because you have a connection to a higher vision and a higher level of truth. Mm-hmm. And you bring that down. Mm. This is like Martin Luther uh, King right. did not... Mm boss around everybody and tell him, <laughs> you do this and you do that. Right. He was right. a great leader because he came and said, I had a dream. That means he was connected to higher potential, to a truth, to a potential Definitely. in the future. Mm-hmm. And he channeled that and brought that down and inspired others. Mm-hmm. So others could see this man is a leader and we follow him. Right. Yeah. So we ended up in a totally different space mm-hmm. and really awe-inspiring space uh, than where we started. And this is what I mean. This is a, a transformation alchemically in nature where really you have a problem in the lower levels that you just have to go through. Yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's a, 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 a transformation happening and you end up with a gift. And actually this is the path of healing. We have right. a problem. A perceived problem. We have a yeah. problem, a yeah. disease, a pain, a suffering, mm-hmm. a, a grief, or whatever it is. Yeah. And in fighting it, it's not working. We just give it power, and it's getting bigger. Or when we are lucky, we can suppress it a little bit in the subconscious, right. but it will make us even more sick, and it will get more power over us there. But in embracing it, dealing with it, and like in the Shamir ceremony, grinding it into high vibrations, uh, loving this problem into high vibrations, there is somewhere a potential of transforming it into a gift that we would not have without this problem. Mm -hmm. So in this ceremony, we kind of, in a ceremonial way, we experience something about life, that the problems we're facing are actually, in the end, blessings. Mm-hmm. This is so um, so important to to think about and to recognize. I think uh, we're all starting. I personally am starting to uh, to get that 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 things that are so-called problems or issues or things that we don't like are really just trying to sort of get our attention and maybe bring us to some kind of deeper understanding. Yeah. yeah, they are gifts. Now the gifts mm-hmm. of life and the, of Creator, they are often, often not packed in Christmas paper with <laughs> bow, yeah, right. and shiny and beautiful. Mm-hmm. They often come in pretty, uh, <laughs> in a disguise that does not look very attractive, yeah, mm-hmm. and we better get away from them. Yeah. But when yeah. we accept them, they right. turn into a gift. Right. So something that for you was a, like a big fear, I guess, but that felt like a fearful thing yeah. to you. You were able to find to find the, the sort of a higher sort of uh, uh, gift there. I had, I, I learned for me the true meaning of line. And mm-hmm. I realized, Roland, what you're running away from and what you're totally scared of is your own power 
and your ability and your mm -hmm. calling to step up also into a leadership role. Wow, wow. So this mm -hmm. is what Lion taught me. And ever sen since I did that, I did not have these dreams anymore of being, um, of being chased by lions. Yeah. For me, lion, meanwhile, is it's mo more a potential in my own future that I have and want to open up myself for. Right, right. Oh, that's, fa that's really uh, fascinating. Um, uh, I think we're going to draw this to a close pretty soon, but maybe just you could tell us um, uh, uh, what, what other uh, things, I know you mentioned the, the, the lion, but um, what, uh, can you just give us another example of one more uh, thing that you might have del delved into, into the, in, with the Shamia that you found really amazing in, in its, uh, what it taught you? One other example. When I look out the window, I see this Douglas fir over there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Douglas fir, when I came to Canada, when I came here to the island, yeah, to Western Canada, was the first I had the impression, I need to deal, I need to understand Douglas fir. She's so, uh, this tree is so dominant mm -hmm. here, yeah. And uh, then one day again, we met in a group, simply what we do in a group energetically, energetically is stronger than what we do. Right. Isolated Just in right. isolation, right. yeah. Makes so sense. I love to do that in a group, yeah. And uh, we, the, the, the result also is bigger. Uh, so we uh, took a few needles, two or three needles, um, put them in the bowl and started grinding with milk sugar and so on. And the first thing we felt is this stiffness and rigid and <laughs> that's s being straight and uh, traditional and there's rules that we got to follow and one uh, uh, and a certain uniformity. When you look at Douglas first, how they grow, they, they are kind of uniform, yeah? Oh, right. When you compare yeah. it with, uh, with Arbutus trees, uh -huh. they are yeah. highly individual. Yes. Douglas mm. firms are f uh, firs are more uniform a little bit, uh, straight one next to the other like soldiers, yeah? Interesting. And mm. uh, so there was this kind of rigidity in our body, pains in our body, but also rigidity in our, there was not much emotion, a certain held back anger, yeah, uh -huh. and, and a rigidity in our thinking. That's the way it was and that's the way we should keep it, yeah, mm -hmm. and, um, and when I had this deeper connection then at the spiritual level with the Douglas fir, I asked, hey Douglas fir, we're in a time of change and what I experienced so far is all about holding on to tradition and to rules and uh, what what do you have to offer us? Uh, what's your support for mm -hmm. us now in this time where we need to change and need to adapt to change? Yeah, Where we need to find new answers and ask new questions and find new answers because the old things don't work anymore. And what I received was a clear image. Douglas for telling me, look at this village here. You see a traditional native village. There's children laughing, uh, women cooking and going along their business, somebody carving a pole, yeah? And everything of that happens because we are the guardians and we mm. hold the space of safety for this village. What I can help you in your time of change is I can give you the safety that you need in order to find the change inside. So you're not pushed from the outside mm. and have to change because then you will resist and you will have a lot of pain to going through the change. I give you the safety, the inner sp safe space inside with my rigidity that you need in order to find what you want to change from inside. And then the change will be an organic one coming from inside and not from fear and threats from the outside. Uh -huh. right. And I thought, wow, you know, you see some, something like that and, and in the end it changes totally. It's something I could not have made up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And ever since then, you know, when I uh, have people that deal with anxiety or s insecurities, sometimes besides the a homeopathic specific remedy, I tell them, maybe you sit with the Douglas fir and meditate on the Douglas fir because she, the Douglas fir can give you that mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of safety that mm -hmm. you're looking for. I can imagine that the knowledge that you gain through these shamanic practices have really enriched your practice as a homeopathic doctor enormously. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It gave me a, every time I do something like this, I my inner world expands. I mm -hmm. get to know, you know, this Douglas fir outside has a representation inside of me. There's a Douglas fir inside. And this is what I actually discover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so and through this resonance with the outer ductless fur, I can open myself up to this aspect that I was not aware of before, that I get to know, and get to know from the lower levels where it vibrates painfully mm -hmm. and is more a problem, this rigidity. Right. But I also know in accepting that, I can reach the same, uh, on a high vibrational level, the same energy and it's a blessing. It gives me safety that allows me to change out of safety and not out of fear. Yeah. 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 Yes, it expands me every time and my expansion in doing these things, uh, I can offer that also to the clients coming to see me, uh, a, a bigger space mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. for healing in a bigger way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Well, it's been really, really amazing and I could sit here and talk to you all day <laughs> and hear your stories. Um, I'm just wondering if we can let people know if they would like to contact you at all, that you are on uh, online and you have your own um, uh, Facebook or you have your own site. I have a website, yeah. 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 I'm too old for Facebook yeah. or at least I never <laughs> could get friends with it. It's too much work. It <laughs> feels so too sweet. strange for me. But I have a website. It's www. Vancouver Island homeopathy.com all one word yeah okay. you will find me you can send e send me emails questions or whatever mm -hmm. and yeah. you uh, can also ask for uh, Shamir ceremonies you're welcome everybody is welcome to take part I offer them uh, some of them publicly publicly yeah and others I do like in students where, uh, with students where I teach homeopathy and things like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very, very much. It's been really interesting. Thanks so much, Roland. You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>